In the headlines, Tinubu calls for unity, nation building in Ido Kabiru message. Nigerians joined the rest of the world to celebrate Ido Kabiru amid economic hardship. Anxiety as gunmen invade Sokoto village on Salah Day, kill, abduct many. On the foreign scene, Israel announces daily Gaza pause for eight deliveries. Good afternoon and welcome to the news update on Trust Television. I am Aisha Salihu. Now the news in detail. President Bola Tinubu on Sunday joined Muslims to observe Edo Kabir prayers at the Jordan Barracks in Ikoi, Lagos. The Edo Kabir festival is celebrated by Muslims worldwide on the 10th day of the Hijri month of Zulhijjah in the Islamic calendar. Accompanied by top government functionaries, the president arrived at the Eid praying ground at 8.55 a.m. on Sunday. Earlier, the president enjoined Nigerians to reflect on the essence of the occasion of Eid al-Kabir, which bears strong meaning and significance for the nation. He made the call in his message to the Muslim community on the joyous occasion of Eid al-Kabir, an event that denotes sacrifice, faith and obedience to the will of the Almighty. The president also reassured Nigerians that his administration is prioritizing their physical, social and economic security and will not relent on this noble endeavor. The 16th Emir of Kano, Muhammadu Sanusi II, is currently holding Salah Dabba as it is traditionally. Traditionally, the Emir will follow through one by Zage, Yan Damadan, Shah Huchi en route back home during a horse which he did. However, this time, the Emir was the only one riding on a horse, while district heads were on either their foot or in vehicles. The Emir had, after leading Eid prayer and sermon at the Kofar Mata Jumwat Mosque, began the Salah Dabar back home. The Eid prayer was observed at the Kofar Mata Jumwat Mosque due to heavy rain that flooded the premises of the Eid ground, which could not be used. Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf and other cabinet members had also observed the prayers with the Emir. It was observed that there is presence of security operatives, including the army, police, civil defense and others who took positions at Alat, providing security. Emir Sanusi took the usual route back home and casually stopping along the way to receive greetings and homage from individuals and groups riding on a horse. The embattled Amir had also announced cancellation of Durba activities during the Eid al Kabir festivities. As Nigerians joined the rest of the world to celebrate Eid al Kabir, Nigerians have been urged to continue praying for the leaders and be supportive for a better Nigeria. Let's now join Bella Musa from Kaduna to give us a few of the celebration. Thank you so much, Bello, for joining us on the news update. Thank you. Mm. How's the celebration in Kaduna at the moment? Pardon? How is the celebration going on in Kaduna at the moment? Well, the celebration is going on fine. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the rain sta started falling around 5 a.m. Uh, mm. on Sunday morning, and it lasted for three to four hours. Uh, at most uh, eight grounds, the eight prayers were scheduled to commence at about... Uh, 30 but at most uh 80 grounds uh prayers did not commence until after uh 10 30. uh a lot of people missed their uh, missed their two record prayers and mm -hmm. uh, many people at the same time uh defied the heavy rain uh, attended it ground and observed uh, the two record prayers at various uh eight grounds in uh kaduna uh, metropolis mm. so what would you say was the security situation well, security. Yes, the security situation. Yeah, there are as usual. There are security uh, agencies uh, 
uh, at different locations, strategic locations uh, within the metropolis and also uh, in every uh, each ground uh, uh, in, within the metropolis here. Uh, so yeah, we can say a celebration is too moving, fine and peaceful uh, here in Kaduna metropolis. But people are lamenting over the rising cost of living, the economic reality uh, in the country that is biting hard on them. Uh, uh, unlike uh, usual Salah celebration where you will see people sharing food uh, to people, but this Salah uh, people are just saying that uh, they are just uh, trying to maintain what they will eat, not uh, necessarily uh, share it to people or spending money unnecessarily or extra spending money because of the economic reality in the country. Uh, even at different locations where uh, rams have been sold. There are a lot of rams uh, without people uh, coming to buy. So uh, the economic uh, hardship in the country is really uh, manifesting in this uh, Salah celebration. Mm. Indeed, the economic situation is impacting on the Salah celebration. Thank you so much. There we had Bella Musa who joined us from Kaduna to give us a feel of the Ida Kabir celebration. Thank you for joining us on the news update. My pleasure. Mm. Governor Madhu Umar of Antiri Sunday joined hundreds of Muslims at the Shelang Eid ground to observe the two Rakat prayers in commemoration of 2024 Idel Kabir Salah celebration. In his sermon, after leading the prayers, Chief Imam Malam Lalwanu Dankaka dwelled extensively on the history and significance of the Idel Kabir to Muslim Ummah. While enumerating the categories of healthy animals for sacrifice, Malam Lalwanu admonished Muslims to slaughter healthy animals. Speaking to newsmen shortly after the prayer, Governor Madhu Umaru Fantiri urged Muslims to celebrate the day by creating peace and unity and following the exemplary virtues of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He believed that the current Current insecurity bedeviling the country, among other issues, would soon be over and urged the citizenry to continue to promote peaceful coexistence and tolerance in the society. It is our prayer that we follow the teaching of our Prophet Muhammad wasallam. that we pray for peace, we pray for security, we know Nigerians are going through hardship, sure. but we hope with prayers that there is light at the end of the tunnel. This is our wish for Nigeria, and it's the time that we need to come together to work together with our leaders and to also coexist. This is the only way out. Nigeria shall rise and be great again. Still on the Ido Kabir celebration, the current economic downturn in the country is forcing many Katsina residents to abandon plans to celebrate Eid with the usual fanfare. Although Katsina residents mostly are low-income earners, many are making efforts to celebrate Salah with new clothes, prepare special dishes among many others, despite the biting economic situation. Abdullah Yamadi has a situation report. <laughs> The mood is unusual and unpleasant, indicating the economic status of many Nigerians who may likely not afford festive meals this Eid al Kabir Salah celebrations. Traders and other vegetable sellers at the popular Erkutungu, Chaiki, Greenhouse, and Yangwadi, as well as Kazna Central Market, are lamenting low patronage attributing the situation to harsh economic predicaments in the country. The market is not encouraging because people are not patronizing our goods due to lack of money and the prices are high. At the moment, the situation is not healthy for many of us here. Many Kazana residents who are mostly civil servants have given up on buying sacrificial animals, saying the 45,000 naira given to them as loan and seller gift by the government is not enough to make ends meet. As an alternative, many are buying food items such as millet and guinea corn 
to make simple dishes and for a for the salad. Well, I only came to buy what I will use for salad day, but it seems unaffordable. The only money I have cannot get up for half of what I wanted to buy. So if you look at it critically, you would agree with me that we are heading to nowhere and the future is bleak. At the regular and temporary livestock markets in Kazna, traders are lamenting low patronage while the few prospective buyers are also complaining about high cost of the animals, making it unaffordable to many. The price of animal of this season is very, very much higher. Can't even compare uh, from last two years back to now because of the situation that we are facing now. Everything is, is high. As you can see all this now, now I have almost five ramp that I bring since day before yesterday. But nobody come and even ask for their price. In the same vein, many residents have postponed or abandoned their travels to other places for salah festivities, pointing accusing finger on the cost of fuel and transportation. Elsewhere, at Kazma Emirate Council, Cross TV News spotted district heads trooping to express their solidarity and unconditional support and respect to the Imam Abdul Mumini Kabrosman as the tradition provides. <laughs> Public commentators are lamenting over lack of concern to the plight of ordinary Nigerians, especially by government and other leaders, a situation posing serious threat to the corporate existence of many societies in Nigeria. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazana. And to a development, suspected gunmen attacked Sokoto village, killing and abducting many in the early hours of Sunday. The attackers stormed Dudundoki village of Guadabawa local government area, Sokoto state, killing over 10 people and abducting many at about 1.30 a.m. of today, Sunday. We will bring you more details as they unfold. Ceylon Security Matters A suspected kidnapper was shot dead while three others were arrested. During a clearance operation at Shikara, a border community in Kogi and the Federal Capital Territory, the FCT Police Commissioner C.P. Beneth Igwe, who disclosed this to newsmen at the command in Abuja on Saturday evening, said the clearance operation was carried out by operatives of the Utako Divisional Police Headquarters, led by CSP Victor O. Geoffrey. He said the operatives who stormed the identified kidnappers hideout at Chikara Forest suddenly engaged them in gun duel. He gave the names of the three suspected kidnappers as Muhammadu Isa, a resident of Dantata village in Abuja, Likita Idris, a native of Kogi State, and Isiaku Muhammadu, also a native of Kogi State. According to him, the three arrested suspected kidnappers have confessed to being involved in a series of kidnapping incidents and other heinous crimes in FCT and its environs. He says some exhibits which include an English pump action, an English pump action gun, a locally fabricated pistol, two live cartridges, cutlasses, knives, and some items believed to be charms were recovered from the suspects. The CP, who said investigation is still ongoing, reiterated the command's commitment to ensuring the safety and security of the residents of the nation's capital. You're watching the news update live on Trust Television. Still ahead. Kano community traumatized by recurring flood disasters call for help. More news will return. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Let's take a look at some of our top stories again. 
tenable calls for unity, nation building in Ido Kabir message. Anxiety as gunmen invade Sokoto village on Salah Day, kill and abduct many. And now to more stories. Over the years, residents of Ngoa, Dubai and Waika Waje community in Kano State have been dealing with recurring floods resulting in the destruction of their livelihood. Trustee Vis Aisha Bashir visited the community as this year's rainy season sets in. Every year by this time, severe floods struck the community of Dungwerda Bay, leaving widespread destruction in its wake. According to residents, the recent rain has caused significant damages to businesses and infrastructure, with the mill road connecting the community to the nearby town rendered impassable. <laughs> We are facing many problems in Ungwandaba as you can see our roads and uh, the rainy season is here. Those who want to go to work spend hours here waiting for tricycles because most do not like to pass this road. <laughs> We have so many problems, especially our roads, now that the rain has started. Many places, including our roads, remain flooded for a long time and it leaves us at high risk of diseases. Last year, when the rains became too much, it even flooded our homes, leaving us trapped. The situation has been worsened by the ongoing rainy season, which has turned the already bad roads into impassable rivers. Vehicles are unable to fly the roads, leaving residents stranded and forced to wade through the floodwaters to get to their destinations. Sincerely, during the rainy season, we suffer a lot. The roads are always flooded. Okay, that is why tricycle riders that do not live here and do not like to even come here at all. We have appealed to the government several times for help. Meanwhile, the community members appealing to the Gwale Local Government Council to intervene and repair the roads, but so far no action has been taken. As the residents of Ungwaida Bay and Waikawaji continue to endure these challenges, the hope remains that their voices will be heard and tangible solutions will be implemented to reduce their plight and restore a sense of normalcy to their lives. Nanai Shabashir Trust TV News, Kano. On the foreign scene, Israel's military said Sunday it would pause fighting around the South Gaza route daily to facilitate aid deliveries following months of warnings of famine in the besieged Palestinian territory. Humanitarian groups have warned for months about a dire lack of food and other essentials in the besieged Gaza Strip. The announcement of a local tactical pause of military activity during daylight hours in an area of Rafa came a day after eight Israeli soldiers were killed in a blast near the far southern city and three more troops died elsewhere in one of the heaviest losses for the army in its war against Hamas militants. United Nations agencies and aid groups have repeatedly sounded the alarm of dire shortages of food and other essentials in the Gaza Strip, exacerbated by overland access restrictions and the closure of the key Rafa crossing with Egypt since Israeli forces seized it in early May. And in sports, the Federal Capital Territory witnessed the opening day of 2024 five-star Premier League, where four matches were on display on day one of the league. Trustee sports correspondent Adeni Ajishafe has this and updates from the world of sports. The opening match day one of 2024 five star Premier League between 12 Arena FC on Green Jersey and Tribe Like FC on Yellow Jersey was a delight to watch as the two teams showed competitive spirit in the league opener. Both teams gave good account of themselves in the defense, middle of the park, wings, and in the attack, searching for opportunities to outsmart each other in the first half. The second half became more intense as both teams were more conscious in search of goal to separate the stalemate they had in the first. On field players tested their goalkeepers who were on ground to save their respect respective teams. The fears encounter not yielding goals both teams and 13 spectators with solid football history on display to show their readiness for the league. Despite no goals registered in the first match, the players bear their minds on the outcome. It was a very good match. Um, the game was intense from the blast of the whistle to the end of the whistle. Um, 
we expected more. I expected more from my teammates, but regardless of the um, scores, um, it's a good one. We took a point. So from here, we know where we stand. Normally, we come from the top. We start well and we finish well, but it's a shame that we got we, we drew the game. But I I I I, I bet you next game you see our best. Matron of the league and first lady of Kora State Ambassador Olufolaki Abdurazak was full of praise for the participating teams. It's an exciting game. Um, we've seen the, the, the goalkeeper save a couple of shots. I think they're doing very well. I think the standard is quite high. You know, I'm very proud of them. Uh, we saw the warm up when we arrived and we looked at them and we thought, oh my God, this is a very hectic warm up. How are they going to, you know, have the energy to play the game? But you can see that it's really frenetic energy and they're really really up and doing. Minister of Youth Development was on ground to watch his youth display their football talents. Tell you, even with a short time, you can see that we have a young, talented, lovable young people in this country. And if we don't start with this, we don't encourage this, you can see it's a private um, stuff and we have been partnering together, we've been trying to see what we can do, work with different organizations and that. Director of Proper Sport, Tunde Macaulay, believes a lot of football talents abide in Nigeria, hence the need to support grassroots sports by witnessing such event. Well, you know, with MPFL, which, as you said, is the Premier League of our sport, we always have to make sure that that's the correct shop window, all right, both for all of us here in Nigeria, but also outside of Nigeria, where Nigerians who live abroad want to know what's happening in their Premier League. But where do those stars come from, right? Those stars cannot be developed without facilities like this, clubs like this, juniors like this, because those youngsters, when they see the players at the highest level, they want to be like them. Managing director of Five Star Premier League said the league is getting better with more teams participating. We appreciate all the teams participating because they put in the effort, put in the hard work, preseason games, and then they are here. You know, the first match was a draw. That's to show how competitive this season would become. And then having... Um, um, the regions of Abuja, Lagos, Kaduna, and uh, Benin participating this year shows great quality. 64 teams will battle for honors in 2024 five star Premier League that will run through Abuja, Lagos, Kaduna, and Benin City for the coveted trophy and prize money. That's Sport News. I'm Adeniyi Aji Shafe. With that, we've come to the end of the news update on Trust Television. Do not forget, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentary. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely Eid al-Kabir celebration.